Um, yeah, so what I've done is I've um, created a program. I realize there's a need for the result in some other projects. There's a need for a way to edit your HTML in the browser that is not WYSIWYG and that can be set to select only certain parts of the page. Um, the easiest way to demonstrate. This is no, this one. This one is actually one of the earlier versions. Forget the text here, it's just nonsense. Um, what this does is, is you click the button, you open you open this up in, in edit mode. And let's say I want to change the first bit. Okay, but the title here it says physics app. No, that's an H1 tag, and what I'm, going to, what I'm going to do is, we're going to edit the text that's in the tag. And in order to do this, you click on the edit button, and you guess the HTML for that particular tag in the tree structure, with all the attributes and the text that's inside it. And when you click on the text, the text pops up in a little text area and you can just change, let's say, physics lab to, I don't know, science lab. Save it and look at the output and now it's a science lab. Also, if you click on this button, you actually get the HTML that you've just edited in the browser and you can actually physically copy all this. You can copy and paste that into another, into any other program. However, that's a slightly older version. Um, this is the latest, the latest one. So, first of all, what it does, it only uses jQuery. There's no other, um, there's no other requirements. And this is a sample of the actual HTML on the page. And I hope you can see that. Um, so. The jQuery selector here, it says, it's basically, it's, it's selecting any paragraph or any, any uh, tag here that's got this class called edit me. So it, you, you, can set, you can call this anything you want, but if you have class equals edit me, what it does is, is brings up all these buttons, it puts that particular tag into an edit into the special edit area where you can edit the HTML in that, inside that tag, but you can't edit anything outside of it. So, just to make this a little bit more clear, um, I scroll down to this one, the second paragraph here. Now we've got a P tag. So basically, it's a paragraph. And that's what the actual HTML would look like. I mean, that's what the actual um, edit of HTML would look like. And that's the HTML that you can copy and paste. And this is the same thing again, but just without any uh, kind of formatting. So, okay, so we've got a P tag. So let's say we want to, if we want to edit the text, we can click on the plus, and the text comes up in a text area. So if we want to just edit, I don't know, type any old rubbish you want in here, and save it, and now we've just edited the text. In addition, we can also insert a tag. Again, if we click on the plus and go to tags, let's say you want to insert a B tag. It's important to click on has children here or else it will give you like a BR tag, an empty, an empty tag. Um, what I really should want to do that is change that to empty. So that by default, it will have children. So let's say we select um, this chunk of text. We want to insert it into a B tag. We click on the insert button, and now you'll see in the tree there's a B. Can you all see that? So there's a B tag here. When we look at the output, we've just, we've just made a whole bunch of text bold. And when we look at the HTML, you can see that the B tag has now appeared. And that's it, unformatted. There's a B tag here somewhere. Yeah, B, the closing B is here. So what, what you've actually done is we've edited the 
HTML in the tag. But what this what this does, okay, so the point of this is to be idiot proof. You can only edit the first of all, you can only edit it in this uh, tree mode. You can't edit in you, you can't edit the HTML in any of these other modes. It's, they're just read only. The idea is I've, I've worked with programs like Joomla and Drupal before, and they all have come with these like really big editors. And they easily let you put in a tag, let's say a B, an I, a U, and a U tag. But it's very hard to remove them once you put them in. Let me remove them convincingly. Um, and that's because it's done in WYSIWYG. It's trying to seem to get. But with this one, you actually see the HTML that's behind the scenes. And it's, de it's designed. The idea is you understand a little bit about HTML. You don't have to be a complete expert. Um, but you can't mess it up. Okay, let's just go a little bit further. Um, let's say I want to insert a list. Oh, this is a B tag. Well, it doesn't matter. Let's say you want to do UL. Insert. So I've just put in the UL tag. Now I can put in a go in here. And if I want to put in a list item, li, it has children, click there, insert. Let's put in another one. Um, what's it here? Li has children, insert. Boom. And now inside the list, we're going to put in some children. We'll put in some text, save it, just call it one. Inside this one, we type in two, save it. And there's your output. We've just entered a, we've just entered, we've just created an, an order, unordered list with two um, list items in it. And of course, if you want to look at the HTML, that's the, that's the actual HTML that you can, you can copy and paste. Now in addition, let's put in a link. Let's go to this paragraph, select some of it, and to put in a link, we simply put in an A tag, and we hit insert. Now an A tag by itself is useless. You need to put it, you need to give it a, a href, you need to give it some attributes. So we can do that. We can click on the A, click on this plus in here, and let's give it a href. And let's give it a size. HTTP colon slash slash let's call it engineyard.com. Insert it, save, and now we've got a link to the engineyard website. So if we look at the output, um, now if we click on this, uh, actually, it actually won't go anywhere because I've no I've no chat on this. So what I've just been able to do is create a and is, are, are we all following this, by the way? Yeah. Okay. So, in addition to in, inserting links, we can also remove stuff. Like, let's say we don't want that. Um, let's say we, we, we don't need this link. But you, you can click on the remove button, we'll remove it entirely. Or we can click on the text only, remove A. Okay. And what that's just done is <coughs> it's got rid of the it's got rid of the A tag, but it's kept the text that was in the tag. On the other hand, if you click on the, the tag and you, you click on remove, you remove the tag and the text. Okay? So basically, um, yeah, so that's, oh yeah, the other thing we can do is we also have copy and paste. If I go down here to this, this paragraph, which is a lot more, which is a lot more interesting, it's got a like this within this, cool stuff like that, and I can also select parts of the the, the text. So let's say if you want to select these pluses on on the left side, the lights, as long as it's the the t the um, the tags I'm selecting are adjacent. It will keep selecting them as a, as a group. 
But if I go if I go down here, say, and I select another tag, it won't. It it'll, it'll it'll only select that one. So it, it will select any group of adjacent HTML or XML. And if I do that, so I can I can so let's say good. I've selected a bunch of a bunch of tags, and I've copied them. I've copied them into this um, this clipboard on the side. And then if I, I can paste them, I can go in here, click on, um, you can click on tags. Once something is selected, there's, you see, you'll get a button here that says paste. So I can paste it, and bingo. You now have, you've just pasted that bunch of HTML that I selected down here, inside the text here. And um, one other thing this does is that you can only, when you come to actually insert and remove tags, you cannot type the tag into the text directly. For example, if you do, I'll do it in here then. Um, let's say I want to type in, I don't know, HTML tag slash html, save it, well what you actually get is, um, let's say I go in here, if I edit this tag, and I do let's say a b tag, okay so if I've manually typed in a b tag, if I save it, is actually, what you actually get is, is um, the stage zone. So you cannot, you cannot physically, you cannot actually mess with the HTML in this. You cannot manually type in a tag. It doesn't work. You have to actually go through the motions of clicking the buttons and getting the editor to put it in for you. <coughs> so there's the output. Um, somewhere there, we type in HTML and it's in there. I mean, B tag, yeah, B. Anyway, it is there. Um, So that's basically it. Uh, the other thing I'm working on is, at the moment it doesn't have any kind of validation, validator. If you go to insert a tag, like let's say you want to insert a, like let's say you want to put in an N tag. There's no N tag. But here I, I just put in an, an end tag. So at the moment there's nothing, there's no validation to stop me from doing that. Um, that's, I'm, I'm actually working on that. What I've done is this is this is also this is you know, the, the next stage I'm working on is to put in a DTD, a document type definition, which is compiled into um, JSON. And that will contain information about what, what tags are allowed into what tags. So let's say you, what this would let you do is, if you have, let's say, a P tag, and when you go to insert, you, you could limit it so that the user can only insert, let's say, B, I, and U tags, but they can't insert a link. So when, when, I, have this, when I have this part of it working, this will actually, this, this corresponds to the DTD format for XML. So the idea is you can, <clears throat> you can limit what tags the user can actually put in. Um, so what this is good for, I've seen some cases of, of programs that create templates. Let's say for a particular, let's say in Joomla for example, there's, there's one of them, I think it's in Community Builder, that creates templates. And the template's got a, a heading and 
text and they come in a particular class, whatever. But then if you want to go and edit the template that it creates, you open up, it gives you a text box with the whole, all the HTML of the page and you have to go in and edit that. And you can easily mess up. So with this program, it's designed so it's, it should be impossible to mess up your HTML. So you go edit your HTML in the browser or your XML and as it stands at the moment, you can't mess up the syntax. Oh yeah, the only validation it does at the moment is if you, if you go and enter a tag, and if the tag has to be a valid, has to match the pattern, it has to be just letters, numbers, um, whatever. It is. But it won't, at the moment it doesn't validate that it's a tag. But if you try and put in, like, say, a space or a colon or something, it, it, it'll reject it. Um, oh yeah, the only other thing I show you is the go back to the tree. Oh yeah, if you, if you go in here, if you try and edit the the, um, the root tag, you can't. It's the, the actual root tag is, is read only. You can only edit what's inside the tag. So, yeah, the other thing I think we have, I have is the Oh yeah, let's go into this one. If we go back to the A, as you can see, of course, we've got attributes. So I can add, I can add another attribute in here. Like let's say I give it an ID of, I don't know, 7777, insert it. And if you click on the ID, you can then, it opens up another text box that you can go and uh, remove this or edit it or whatever. Click on the ID again, and there's, there it's saved. Um, you can keep adding as many tags as you want. Add another ID, it'll give you an error, and you can't do that, because it's, it's not. Also, if you try and add a space, it won't, it won't do it either, because it's, it's um, invalid syntax. But as long as you, you do, as long as the tag name is, is valid, and, and as long as it's uh, correct, and as long as it's unique, it, it will it will be inserted. You can also remove tags by clicking on the minus and then you save them that actually physically puts them back into the page. Um, yeah that's pretty much everything. I've been writing it for the last um, two months and um, spare time. And uh, any questions, comments? I'm still wait. What was the biggest challenge that you Good question. What's the biggest challenge that I faced? Um, well, it's written in jQuery and it uses loads of IDs. There's the, the actual naming system for the IDs for, like, if you look at this whole construction, like each, you see there's a color scheme. And there's a lot of different uh, naming and ID names and class names and that. Keeping track of them is really difficult. Um, because once you start having a lot of different, like for instance, the, the, the tag, like the tag that's the bit that's in blue is a class NN, and then the ID would be something like, um, this is kind of horrible actually. If you actually look at the, the HTML that this generates in Firebug, come on, it's pretty nasty. So this is. But the NN is the actual tag name, and all these other ones are different prefixes and stuff that go in there. So uh, keeping keeping track of all that stuff was a lot of fun. Anything else? And um, have you thought about how you'd save the like? Is the, is the idea that once you finish editing, you like do a push or to the server or? Um, your question is how, how would you save it? Um, this doesn't actually save it. I mean, it just edits what's in that div at that time, at the time you're doing it. It assumes that you're already, your site is already, that this is already part of a bigger site and you're saving it with Ajax or whatever, host, you know, host forms or whatever. Um, it doesn't have any kind of a save mechanism built into it. Because I'm assuming that already 
that already is part of the page. Anyone else? Who is it aimed at? Excuse me? Who is it aimed at? Who is it aimed at? That's another very good question. Um, I guess you call it kind of middleware. It's designed to go, it's a, like, it's a plugin, and it's designed to be like an editor. And it's designed, like, it's not WYSIWYG. It does require a certain basic HTML knowledge. And it's designed to go in, like I say, as part of a, a content management system that lets you edit, but it, it's, it lets you edit like a HTML or XML, but it kind of forces you to adhere to certain rules. Yeah, so for me, I think it's, it's kind of, um, this is terrible, but it strikes me. My mother loves Wizzy Bagels. So right, yeah. Easy, easy, easy. But my father in law has enough knowledge that he likes to be able to tinker right. play around. But He'll do it in a controlled way, so it's not going to go pear shaped or anything. Right. It's kind of nice, yeah. So I think yes. Actually, yeah. Yes, thanks. It's, it's, it's actually designed for, yeah, like you say, for someone to tinker. Yeah, somebody who has knowledge, but not who isn't an expert. Or, yeah. Right, so it's, the idea is that you can't mess it up. You can go in the back, you can edit the bits that you're meant to edit, but you can't. Now, it's not meant to be hacker proof, it's meant to be idiot proof. Well, not necessarily idiot proof, but it's designed so that if you're, if you don't get confused with lots of bills or something that you, you can't really um, mess up. Oh yeah, you, you can also, I should have done this, you can also use, you can also open and close these tags. So, that's probably not too obvious, but yeah, I think it's down here. Um, you can, and you can also, Uh, you should be able to open and close. Oh, there, that one worked. You can open and close the the attributes part, and you can also open and close the um, the children. So you can show and hide the whole thing. So it's yeah, it's designed to be. Like let's say <clears throat> you're in a company, you you maybe you've trained your you would train up your secretarial staff to a certain level that they know what they're typing. Um, but, like, like you say, it wouldn't be for your mother. It wouldn't be for someone who's completely, completely clueless. Um, I think one other thing there, I forgot what it was. But, yeah, okay, any, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much then.